All right. Today, I want to talk about air ride suspension. The huge debate that's going on all over the place right now. I mean, there's just mass amounts of talk about two links and four links and six links and I hate two links and they're crap and this and that. Okay. To a certain extent, yes, I will agree two links are crap, but to a basic builder, to somebody who's not going to be traveling down a time attack track or, you know, uh, four wheel drive, um, going off road, uh, a lot of the suspension. The thing is, okay. You got a wheel over here. You got a wheel over here and then you have your axle, right? This is, I mean, we're going down just all the way to the basics. You have a two link, a two link connects here and here. There's basically like a square under here, a square under here. And you've got a U-bolt that goes up and over the axle that holds it on there. From an aerial view up over top, same thing, wheel, wheel, axle, your two link will go along here. Now, depending on how your setup is, let's say this is the cab right here, you've got your frame rails are either going to run on the inside with your C-notch uh, coming here and going up and over, or it'll be on the outside. Is, regardless, it's going to go, or, or your frame will be right over the top of it. Um, your two link is going to be like that. It's going to be connected here at the axle with U-bolts. In other words, your, everybody says that it messes up your pinion angle. Whatever your right height is going to be, your pinion angle is set. It does not turn. From the side view, say this is your axle, your two link is going to come under and you're going to have U-bolts that go up and over like that and it's fixed. Your pinion angle is going to stay wherever you put it. If you set it like that, if you set your pinion angle like that, it's going to stay right there at ride height. If you go lift up or down, that's going to change the direction. Let's talk about that as well. Okay, a lot of people are complaining about the movement okay anything that has a fixed point of any link bar fixed point to fixed point this point that it pivots on okay say your axle is over here and it's connected to your axle this is your pivot point everything a two link a four link okay these points right here make a circle around that point, an exact circle. This is not exact. This one is going to go around that one. You have two different points that you have to think about. This all has to do with that geom geometry and all those other big words. But basically, you have to think about these circles. Where is everything going to end up? If you have your axle is in between these, and you have a link tab there and a link tab there that connect top and bottom. This is your four link. When you drop your suspension, your suspension comes down, this stuff goes up. Now you you got to think of where it's going to be, okay? Let's say you set your pinion angle here so that it's to three points there. When you drop and now everything is up here, this is going to change because now you have a straight point between here and there. Okay, now it's going to be pointed this way. <laughs> Same thing on the bottom end. You come down or your lift, your lift is going to come down here like this. However far it is from here to here, it's going to be the same from here to here, which that's going to be a little bit more like that. Now you got a straight point here. Your pinion angle is going to be aimed down there. And this is where your ride height is. Wherever you're going to ride. When you drop it all the way to the ground and you lift it all the way up, <clears throat> the center point of where you want to be sitting, let's say you want to sit three inches off the ground. This is where three inches off the ground is. Your pinion angle needs to be level at three inches off the ground. If you live, if you lift three more inches off the ground, your pinion angle is going to be off. 
when you drop all the way to the ground, your pinion angle is going to be off. This is where your drive shaft connects to your transmission. Okay. Same thing here. When it goes up like that, your drive shaft is going to do this and then go in to your drive, uh, to your transmission there. Same thing here. It's going to go like this and then in. Okay. So that's range of motion. The thing about a two link, and this is what everybody wants to complain about as well. You have your two link. It links here and it goes basically right underneath your axle and your U-bolts go over it. Okay. Now that's connected. You have your pinion angle and you set it level. Let's say this is right height right here. Okay. And that's your pinion right here that comes out. This is where your drive shaft goes and that connects to your transmission. When you drop it down, your frame is going to come down. This is going to go up. When this goes up, same thing. This is your pivot point. So you're going to draw a big circle wherever this is going. Okay. When it moves, it's going to move to here. So now we have a line going from here to here. It's going to move forward or it's going to move forward this way in your wheel well. That's another thing we got to talk about. When it goes up to here, your pinion angle See, we've got that like that. This was right here like that. Same with that. It doesn't move at all. So now it's going to be like this. Your pinion is now off center. Okay, this is ride height. Ride height is where everything is going to be sitting perfect. That's where you want. If you want to be three inches off the ground, six inches off the ground, wherever you're going to want to set your front end and your rear end, your pinion angle has to be straight. The reason, okay, let's get into that a little bit. The reason you want your pinion angle straight, say this is that pumpkin, but halfway between your axle. Okay, here's your axle. You've got this thing here, and here's the rest of the axle. This is what it looks like from the back. Okay, from the top or from the side, it'll have this piece that comes down and like that, and a piece that comes out, and then this bolts to your drive shaft. Okay, and then you're at the side of the axle right here. This is your pinion. The reason this is like that, okay? The reason this needs to be level whenever you are traveling 80 mile an hour down the freeway is because you have oil in here. This oil sits at a certain level in here. On the back, you'll notice there's a bolt right there. There's always a drain, a, a, a fill bolt, and then on the bottom, there's going to be another bolt. That's a drain. Okay, that's to dump the oil out and you, you fill it with more oil. This level needs to be right here, wherever the top of this bolt is, because all your gears in here are spinning at 8 million trillion miles an hour. And if you're sitting like this, you've got oil up, oil's going to go level. So if you're sitting like this, there's no level getting up into this shaft. There's no oil getting into the top half of where all those gears are. So those gears are going to start getting hot and they're going to go bad and then they're going to seize up and it's going to go so wrong, so wrong. That's how you burn up rear ends, okay, is by not having your pinion angle straight. So when you have your ride level sitting at wherever height you want to be at, that's where it needs to be at the centermost level so that the oil goes where it has to go, okay. That's... A very important thing. Now you know about pinion angle. Now you know about uh, how to where to set your pinion angle. Uh, you know the difference between a two link and a four link because a two link is two bars in between an axle. Say this is a tire, tire, and your pumpkin. You've got two here. If you go with a four link, you've got a tire, a tire, your axle, your pumpkin. You're going to have two bars that come out that are straight and you're going to have a triangulated bar okay some guys go from the top of their pumpkin if they have if if it's metal if it's cast iron you're not going to be welding to the top of your uh your differential okay so that's why most guys will do it like this and they'll come to a center point here this these bars here stop movement 
from side. These ones don't do that. You've got two bars here. That's it. There's nothing there. You see, you're going to have a link here and a link here. This is what ties it to that. And then, like I said, your U-bolt, U-bolt. There's nothing stopping this from moving this way. Okay? That's what's nice about a four-link. Now, a four-link is useless if all you're using is just solid link ends that don't have a twist to them. Okay? If they have a, a twist to them, an adjusting nut, usually the adjusting nut, you're going to tighten down. It's not going to move anyway. So now you need, uh, what are they, bar bung ends or whatever. It's, a, it's where, where you got a bolt that goes through, and then it's got a swivel point inside the bowl that'll move around. You want to put those on one end over here because what that's going to do is that's going to allow this. What are we going to use? Another big word, articulate. It's going to allow it to move independently on either side without messing with the other side too much. Okay? What that does is that allows you to go over a bump. Let's say you've got a curb over here and nothing over here. You're going to be able to, let's say that's a tire and this is a tire. Yeah, this is really good drawing. And you're like that. That's going to allow you to go over a bump like that without lifting this one off the ground. Okay, these are basically stationary. You could just about lock all this together and you're gonna have the same effect. Make that one solid box, okay? What happens when you have a pumpkin, you know, I'm just naming off stuff, a wheel, 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 and you've got two bars, okay? There's no articulation. Articulation, you're gonna move this up and you might get some flex, okay? The biggest part of the flex that you're gonna get out of a two link is going to be the frame flexing, bending, like I showed you on the uh, Ranger. Uh, the frame is gonna flex or the rubber bushing, okay? This is the side view of your link in. You know, this is your link bar that welds to this. Okay, you've got a hole in the middle that a bolt goes through, and then you've got that black rubber piece that's right here, and then the steel on the outside of that. What's going to flex? This rubber. Okay, you do too much flexing, and over time, you're going to beat the crap out of this rubber that's in the center. Okay, so that's why a two-link is not made for time, time attack, driving the hell out of my truck, Driving back and forth over, you know, steep and gnarly terrain and four by fouring and all that kind of stuff. Um, with an air ride suspension. I, I guess I, I really do need to throw that in there because there's other suspensions that have coilovers now where they'll put springs behind the axle and there's not much movement. That's the thing. With a two link suspension you're not going to get much more travel than maybe three to maybe four inches up and down. That's it. You, you're, you're not going to be looking at side to side action where your truck is going to be sitting like this. Let's say that's the back of the cab. Here's your little handle and your tail lights. You're not going to be sitting with this wheel on the ground and this wheel up. Well, that's how you'll sit with a two link. With a four link properly done, you're gonna actually be able to keep your wheels on the ground and articulate back and forth because it's gonna have that kind of flex, like a four by four truck, like a rock crawler, that kind of thing. If you want to be able to do side to side motion, and you want to be able to articulate and twist it around and do three wheel motion, you're going to need a four link. If all you're going to do is straight line cruise down the street like a car, you're going to have no more suspension than just your standard car, your tuner cars that are lowered to the ground. You're, that's, that's the kind of riding you're going to do. Low, slow, cruising. You can go to a show, lay it out, and be cool. That's what a two-link suspension is going to allow you to do. You want anything more than that? 
you, you need a four link. If you want to do anything special outside of just go straight and lay it on the ground, you're also not going to do two electronic valves. Two electronic valves on the back is a no-no because you're going to have too much pressure on one side and not enough pressure on the other side and you're going to hurt your axle. You're going to you're, you're, you're going to basically be lifting it on one side and the other side is not going to have enough pressure to balance you out and you're going to cause too much pressure. So always go with one valve setup. That means you have one valve and then you have your T this goes to the bag and then you have a second valve that dumps your air out. That's all you need because this is going to go in and it's going to air up both sides at the same time. Okay. The only other problem with that is, is that is as you're, as you're driving along, that wants to balance out. So if you're heavier on one side, it's going to push down and it's still not going to ride 100% right because you're not going to have the same amount of pressure in both. Um, if you are like seriously into paying attention to your air ride, then you might be able to go with two valves. Okay, because you're going to keep even pressure on both sides, but you're not going to know how much weight is on both sides because one side is going to have you and the gas tank or you and your kid in the back seat, or you're going to have a tank on one side, you on the other side. I mean, it's, there's so many variables that change the weight. That's why you can't do one valve for all four bags because there's so much weight in the front. The front's going to push down, it's going to squeeze the air to the back and lift your rear end up. And it's not going to air upright. Same thing with the rear. If you have two valves, you're going to have to keep it balanced. Um, some guys put a level on their dash so that they can see if their truck's level. They'll put their truck on level ground. They'll measure everything, get it right, and put that level in there so it's center bubble. And they will always know where their truck is sitting while they're going down the road. This is why I had a huge, well, it wasn't really huge. I had a discussion on Facebook just a few days ago all about this. And uh, uh, some of you may know Max Fish, he has a book out and he explains a lot of this. And he, his, his standings, he is very much against a two link. And for a lot of good reasons, a lot of good reasons why a two link is not good. But for the basic person that doesn't have a whole lot of money, but you need, doesn't have a lot of money, but that's what you can do and you can get into the bag scene. If you're one of those guys, you have to understand the ins and outs of what you're doing with your truck, with a two link. You're not going to be doing a whole lot. You're not going to go crazy and, you know, be all kinds of different movements and side to side and all this crap. You're going to be driving your truck and laying it out. That's it. That's what a two link is for. Um, and you're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of crap about it. That's just, that's just how it is. You know, a lot of your builders, they know that if they're going to build it for you, they're not going to want to put a two link on your truck. Why? Because they don't want to hear you complain about how your two link doesn't let you do this and doesn't let you do that. Cause they're going to come back at you and say, I know. <laughs> I know it doesn't. I tried to tell you a four link is what you want because you're going to be able to do more. One of the other setbacks to doing a four link. Yes, you're going to have to move a lot of crap around. Uh, reverse four links. Reverse four links are cool, but there's two major setbacks to that. Um, there's times where they will develop a death wobble. I've had it happen. I've had it. A reverse four link before and death wobble is where for some reason i don't know the exact terminology about why it does all this but it'll start doing this going down the just going down the road and it feels like you're gonna fly off the road and in some cases you can if you don't slow down enough and get it to stop okay that's one thing about a reverse four link somebody else can explain that i don't have the knowledge as to why it does it all i know is that it does do it all right, the other thing about a reverse four link, this, okay? You have a, the center of your axle 
you've got your tabs and all that, and then you've got your, that's the front of the axle, okay? And your drive shaft. The problem is, is you have the same thing that you had going in the other direction when it's on the other way. You have your center point. A center point, again, you have your circle and you have your circle. This is the motion that that's going to make from dropping and lifting. This is what this does, okay? You, it's basically like this. Anytime you drop or lift, it's going to come forward at the centermost point and then back away from the truck. The problem with away from the truck is when you come away, here's the transmission. So when it goes away, it's moving away from the transmission that way. When you go away from the transmission, you put too much lift, you're going to pull your drive shaft directly out. You pull your drive shaft out at 60 mile an hour, your drive shaft's going to hit the ground and it's going to screw everything up from there back. It can rip your whole suspension out. Uh, if it goes too far, let's say you hit a bump and you catch a little air or whatever, your bags could rip. Your air management's going to go to shit. That's going to drop your front end down when you come back down on the ground and your axle is going to fly out the rear. It might rip off the whole back half of your truck and then you're on the ground going, ah, <laughs> it's just not good. So that's, you need to understand. If you can build a four link, a reverse four link, and it's got a stop point where it comes down to a certain point and stops, then you're gonna be good, okay? That's, that's, that's why a lot of people say don't use a reverse four link. Um, they, you know, they're nice because you don't have to move your tank, you don't have to move your exhaust. A lot of that stuff doesn't have to be moved when you use a reverse four link. So basically, it comes down to your two links and your reverse four links are convenient. They're convenient for the guy who doesn't want to move a lot of crap. Okay, that's, that's the problem with conveniency is you need to know your limitations if you're going to build something convenient. Um, a, a standard, uh, regular four-link is going to be a lot safer in the end. A lot of your builders, I think I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. Your builders are not going to want to build something that's convenient that you don't know the limitations of that can possibly kill you. Um, some of your bigger builders, they, they're they doing two links. I don't know if they're explaining to the people that they're putting these in. This is going to be for cruising. That's something that's very important. If you're getting a two link put on your truck, you need to understand it's for cruising only. It's not for anything major. Uh, reverse four link, same thing. It's not for anything major. You're not going to be going out and hitting the dunes. <laughs> At least I would hope not. Something else I forgot to talk about, and that is on the two link. Remember I said you've got your center of your axle. We're looking at it from the top. Here's your wheel and a wheel. Remember I said about the side to side motion. Side to side sway can be eliminated by putting a pan hard bar in. Now we're going to look at it from the back. Here, wheel, wheel, center. This is the back of it. You can put in a pan hard bar. Pan hard bar goes from here and it goes to the frame. Say this is your C notch, and you're trying to get that. You're trying to get that bar as long as possible, but you're still going to be tied to the one thing. The one thing is that circle is still there. So at ride height, you want this to be basically almost squared up. But when you drop it down, your axle is going to go up and it's going to move in this motion. When you move up or down, it's going to move your axle center point here. But every time it moves, it's going to move this way. Okay. It's going to move out that way. The problem with that is, is now you have your fender. Here's the outer fender of where your wheel is. It's going to move close to this. When you drop all the way down, it's going to be really close to the top of that fender. And it's going to bump into it. Down, it might even come out a little bit, depending on how short you made your pan hard bar. Okay, and how much travel you want to keep from your lift. A lot of you guys, you're like, man, I got mega lift. Well, you got mega lift. 
if you have a pan hard bar, it's going to limit you to what you can and cannot do as far as how much lift or lowering you can get. All right, your basic watts length is going to consist of, you're going to have a straight up and down bar, okay? Say this is where the back of your pumpkin is. Okay, the center of the back of your pumpkin is going to be a center bolt here. This piece on the back of your differential can pivot right here. You can spin that thing like a helicopter, but it doesn't stay like that. You've got one bar here, connects there, and one that connects here. This one will go straight out this way, and this one will go straight out that way at ride height. Okay, this is going to link here. It's going to link here, here, and here. That way, when you drop down and this goes in the up direction, again, everything travels at a curve. So this is going to travel in this kind of an arch, and this one is going to travel in this kind of an arch. What's going to happen is it's going to keep your axle center. Okay? That's why I, <laughs> I got confused myself when I was starting to think about it. So I had to sit here and because I said I'm not a professional. So when it moves, it's going to do that. Okay. When it moves that way, it's going to pivot this whole thing. Okay. This is going to stay in the same spot here. This is going to move up this way. So this whole thing ends up turning that way on the way up and turning this way on the way down, holding your axle center straight up and down. That way it doesn't move left to right. So those are your options when it comes to being able to keep your axle from swaying left to right with a two link, with a six link, with a four link. I mean, there's a lot of applications for, for using those. I hope this helps a lot of people in figuring out what they're doing with their trucks. Pet peeve. <laughs> I got to touch on this. This is the last thing. I swear. I swear. Okay. We were talking about the range of motion. Okay. Let's say this is, this is your wheel well. Okay. Most people want their axle and their wheel to be perfectly centered. All too many times, and I'm sure you guys have seen it. You'll see somebody at a show and their wheel is doing this. Okay? And that's what and that's what their wheel looks like. It's tucked, not centered. We we can figure out why. When you're planning your four link or your two link, if you use Say this is, this is your wheel, this is the center of your axle right here. If you use little short link bars, remember that circle, it's small. Let's put a longer link bar on there. Ah, some bitch is big, right? That's a big circle. So you're gonna have very little front to back movement out of a longer link bar. Short link bars, are for short traveled trucks. If you're not gonna be picking it up or laying it down more than a range of motion of about six to eight inches, just to get your wheel clear of the fender, you can use a short bar and you're not gonna have much pull one way or the other. But if you wanna have, uh, let's say you're using a 22 or a 24 or you know, one of those big, big, big wheels, you're going to need more travel to get that to clear the fender, to bring it all the way up. More travel is going to require a longer bar. Okay, if you're using little tiny wheels and you're just going to pick it up off the ground just enough to get rolling, a smaller link bar is fine. And that, you know, and like I said, you know, that's, that's for a two link or a four link, you know, you're, uh, your four link, you're going to have two here, you know, and these are going to be sitting just right. Now, I'm not going to try to explain the geometry of how all this works, but if you're going to do a small range of motion, like I said, you know, this, 
This one's going to move a little bit like that. This one's going to move a little bit like that. Up here, if you go up one, one, it's only one link bar over. So you're only moving from there to there when you go up or down. So short movements, you're not going to move a lot. Your longer link bars, you're going to have a, a longer circle again. This is, you know, it's, it's only going to move half, half of what it was on a shorter one. So keep that in mind. The more motion you want to make with your truck, the more lift, the more lateral movements, all that, it all plays into what type of suspension you're going to get. Some of you are like, well, what's a parallel? Parallel, uh, six link, you're going to have two bars on this side that are straight. These, like I said, they're going to move up and down. Right on the other side, here's your wheel, wheel, your axle. You're going to have a bar over and under. Okay, This is your axle, over and under. On one side, you're going to have two bars on this side, over and under. Okay, These type of uh, suspension setups require a Watts link or a pan hard bar back here, right behind your... Uh, your differential holding that axle straight because this is going to have side to side movement. Um, then you can put your bags wherever you want. Bag placement is really a whole lot of matter of preference, but wider out, you're going to have more stability in, you're going to have a lot of body roll. Uh, on bar, you're going to need to make sure your bars are beefy so that they don't bend and they can lift the weight of the truck or whatever else you're going to try to put in there. If it can lift the truck, that's great. But you put six, seven people in the bed because you're at the show and you want to look cool. You better hope your link bars are sturdy enough to hold all that weight that's going to now jump into the back of your truck. Um, what else was I trying to explain? Um, yeah, that's I, it's just... Really, you need to build your suspension for what you plan on doing with your truck. You want to do it all? You better have the proper suspension. You better have the way it, the way it should. Um, you're going to have, let's say, uh, a, a six link. You're going to have your, your, your standard four link. And it's going to be connected. And it's going to have, you know, your little bit of movement. Now you're going to have... Two more bars coming back here with a wishbone. Wishbone is, you're going to have a link in and a link in, and it's short. This one's going to attach to your axle. This one's going to hang down. The reason this one hangs down is because now you've got a bar that goes out, and you've got your bag on there. As this moves up and down, this needs to be able to swing out and back with your axle on the full range of motion. So your bags are actually behind the axle right here to help lift it up. That way, it's a lot of people say it rides better. A lot of people say it doesn't. It's just really a matter of preference and which way uh, you're going to listen to whoever had one of those. And you can have whatever suspension, but if the bags aren't set up right and you're putting mass amounts of air pressure into them, they're going to ride stiff. If, you're, if you can lift your truck with minimal air pressure, it's going to ride softer. It's, it's physics, right? I mean... You put a heavy-duty spring in a car, it's not going to bounce. You put a lightweight spring in a car, it's going to bounce easier. The shocks are what help to slow that bounce down. Oh, God, I can talk forever on this. This is, it's, it's, it's everything that goes into what you need to think about for your build. What are you going to do with your build? That's the number one question you need to answer yourself. What are you going to do with your build? How are you going to drive it? What are you going to subject it to? And all of that. I mean, I can, there's, yeah, there's so many different things we can talk about. But that's it. What are you going to do with your build? Uh, if I didn't cover anything, please, some of you builders, go ahead and comment. Um, any comments, welcome. If I said something wrong, please correct me. Get a discussion going down there in the comment box. Share it on Facebook. Share it everywhere. You know, if I said something wrong, share it and explain why you're sharing it. Hey, I'm sharing this because he said da 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 and that's not right. I, I don't claim to be the perfect guy. I don't claim to be a proper builder. 
I'm just a guy in a garage that's learning a lot of stuff. Thank you guys for hanging out. As long as you guys have, I would just wish 10 years ago, I would have had more knowledge to be able to, to give you guys. I'm not taking my videos down because there's a lot of good knowledge in them. And uh, we're always growing. I've got guys that I call that learn from me and now I learn from them because they've gone to that next level. I'll always be a basic builder. I don't really want to go further than where I am now is except making a, a, a better ride and uh, a safer ride. And, 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 and that's really all I'm going to do. I'm, I'm not a big finisher. I'm yeah. So anyway, <laughs> please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already. Thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video. Just keep it low and slow.